Good morning everybody and welcome to this week's sports podcast. It's Good Friday, the 15th of April. We've got plenty to get through this week. It'll be an exciting week of action in the European football. But I think we really need to start today with cricket because we've got the start of the Halifax Cricket League this weekend. But also the breaking news uh, this morning is that Joe Root has resigned as the captain of the England cricket team. So obviously um, something after the trip to the Caribbean has clicked in his mind and decided that this is the time to stand down. Um, there's been lots of rumours about this happening for several months. Um, so now he's taking it. People are saying, is it the right moment? Why has he picked this moment? My personal view is possibly because he knows who the next coach of England is going to be and he feels maybe it's a time for him to stem down and for them to have a quick clean sweep in that respect. The only problem we have is that we don't really have a, a talent pool to pick from. There's a dearth of candidates for the role to take over from Joe. Um, the obvious candidate is the only obvious candidate really is probably Ben Stokes, but whether he'll want to take on the job after his mental health issues he suffered in the last um, 12, 18 months following the sad passing of his father amongst other things is a, something that remains to be seen. Uh, the only other obvious candidate I can see is Stuart Broad, but he doesn't always play every test, and he's not capable of probably playing every test now. He needs to manage his time playing, so is he a good choice or not? Um, the only other candidate I can think of who might be considered be James Vince, but I'm not sure he's actually good enough to be in the team. So, But then again, if you want someone like Mike Braley, who was probably not on ability going back 40 years, wasn't good enough to be in the team, but was a good captain, he's specifically chosen as a captain, then maybe Vince would be a good choice because of his experience in the county championship. And it's not just the fact that the cha- it's not about the quality of the championship so much, it's the fact that he's got the experience of cap- captain say. So we'll see what happens, but obviously it, people say it's a strange time, but actually it's probably a good time because we haven't got to, we've got like sort of two months yet to the first test or six weeks to the first set of test matches against New Zealand. So maybe it is a good time, but we'll see how that story develops. So, anyway, um, I'll stick with the cricket for now because, obviously, it's like I say, it's the start of the Halifax cricket season, uh, league season this weekend. The first game's played tomorrow, Saturday the 16th. And, um, first of all, I've got to say, um, good luck to all the teams. It's not just the teams, the players, it's the coaches, the people behind the scenes that help out, the tea ladies, the people who prepare the ground. So, you know, thanks to all those people for keeping um, the league running. And um, it'll be interesting to see that, you know, how the season goes. Can Mythe and Roy defend their title this season after winning it last year? They've got um, Thornton away in the first match of their defence of a title, so good luck to them there. Um, the boys at Bradshaw, their first match is away to Triangle, so it won't be an easy one, but uh, obviously a traditional one, so good luck to them in that first game. Good luck, good luck to Simon and the lads. Um, Sorby Bridge. Um, they've got a match at home to um, Illingworth uh, St Mary's. So um, Steve Jordan and the older team there, good luck to them in their first game of the season. Uh, the other games, uh, welcome to uh, Heaton Park Chapel, their first game at the top level against Worley at home tomorrow. We've also got Copley against Booth and we've got a welcome return to the top league for, for Ludden Foot. They're playing SBCI, so they are opening fixtures. Um, hopefully the weather will be kind tomorrow. We'll get six good matches and I'll be back next week with a report on how things go. So um, best of luck to all those teams. Um, before I move on to the next bit about cricket, I'm going to also say good luck to my friend Mike Jakeman. He's got his first game as captain of the second eleven at South Arm this weekend. So good luck, Mike. Hope it goes well for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's where we are on the local scene. All um, Basically everything's uh, ready to go now and uh, hopefully it'll be a good season for everyone. Um, now we've mentioned England, we've talked about the Halifax Cricket League, we've also got to talk about Yorkshire now, they've started their season yesterday, first day of play in this season's Division 1 County Championship, not a bad start at all, um, uh, playing away to Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire were all out for 227, three quick wickets for um, Pakistani debutant Harris Ralph, um, made uh, important inroads for Yorkshire, um, Gloucestershire, like I say, 227 all out, featuring a century of 136, I think it was, by Marcus Harris. Yorkshire were 37 without loss at the close. I think Live's got 24 and Hill's got 3. So, um, a steady start there for Yorkshire in reply to Gloucestershire. Hopefully, again, the weather will stay nice and they can come up with a good result in the first game of the season. Um, they've had lots of turmoil off the pitch during the winter, but let's hope they can concentrate on the cricket during the summer and uh, put some pride back in the club. 
Um, so now we're going to move away from cricket and talk about the... Uh, oh, sorry, no, we're not going to move away from cricket. We'll just mention one more thing. Um, we're going to talk about England women's cricket. Anya Shrubsoul announced her retirement from women's cricket, international cricket, should I say, this week. Most people will remember her as being the lady who took the vital wicket that won England the World Cup um, against India. Um, she's obviously decided it's time to call a time on her career for England. Um, so well done to Anya and a great career. And I'm sure England will still continue to go on um, from strength to strength after their good defence. Although they didn't win the title, they put up a good performance in the end of their defence of the World, uh, World Championship, the recent World Cup. So, um, yeah, I'm sure she's got plenty of good memories of Anya. OK, now we're going to talk about football. And, um, well, it's been an exciting week in Europe to start with. And... Um, a good weekend for the uh, British teams generally because they've all qualified for the next stage of the uh, competitions they're in, with the exception of Chelsea. But Chelsea were really unlucky not to get through. Unfortunately, the damage was done in the first leg at Stamford Bridge when they took that um, defeat 3-1 at home. And basically, they've lost to Karim Benzema and a moment of magic also by Luka Modric when he picked out Rodrigo for the goal that basically took the match to extra time on Tuesday. Chelsea were 3-0 up. Fantastic piece of skill. Uh, with the outside of his boot from Modric to pick out Rodrigo and centre who finished it beautifully. Um, not something he's known for every season, but unfortunately for Chelsea, he managed to hit the net with this one, took it to extra time, and then Benzema popped up again and uh, basically struck the killer blow to put them out. So they're pretty proud of the performance. So um, In the other games in the Champions League, uh, Manchester City had to fight their way through, literally, um, after a second half, backs against the wall, and also... Um, a battle against the uh, Atletico players, um, which turned really nasty towards the end, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some uh, repercussions for players such as uh, Stefan Savic, who just lost his head, pulling Jack Grealish's hair, headbutting, I believe, Raheem Sterling, and basically chasing after Grealish up the tunnel. The police were involved, I believe, but whether, what will come out of that, I don't know. But in the end of the day, Manchester City are through, and Atleti, obviously, a reflection of their manager, the, the, the disgrace, really, they should face some kind of action for that. Whether they will, we'll see what you have to do about it, if anything. Um, in the other Champions League match, um, uh, affecting British teams, Liverpool uh, came through. They were a 3-0 draw with Benfica. I think they eased off a bit, made seven changes. I think they knew they were through. Um, exciting game to watch. My next door neighbours, Liverpool fan, he went and said it was a good game to watch. Um, but they're through. So now we've got um, two semi-finals where Manchester City will take on Real Madrid. And Liverpool will take on Villarreal, who surprisingly somewhat um, knocked out Bayern Munich. Um, Bayern probably would have expected to pull back the 1-0 deficit from the first leg over in Spain, but they were able to do so. They did level the tie at one all when they scored in the second half. Um, I think it was Lewandowski actually that scored. But um, um, Villarreal struck back with about I don't know, seven or eight minutes to go towards the end, and they hung on fairly comfortably, to be honest with you. Although they did have a lot of shots, did Bayern Munich. The, uh, they didn't really look overly... You know, stressed by it all. And Unai Emery is a good European manager, and he got uh, Villarreal through to the, the semi final. So there'll be underdogs there. Most British people will be hoping for a Manchester City Liverpool final now. That's what I'm hoping for. It should be a fantastic game. They play each other again this weekend. We're going to talk that, about that again in a moment. Before we do that, we'll talk about the uh, Europa League and West Ham come up with a fantastic performance in Leon last night after the one all draw at the London Stadium. Um, they beat Leon last night by three goals to nil. A convincing uh, performance, brilliant away performance. Um, four nils was absolutely fantastic for West Ham. I thought last night. In fact, they all were really. But um, some great goals, including one from Declan Rice. Um, saw West Ham through comfortably. Again, there were some ugly scenes towards the end, but Leon are known for crowd violence. Anyway, um, it seems to be rearing its head across Europe generally this, at the moment, which is something we don't want to see. Also in the Europa League. Rangers um, came through against Braga after extra time. They looked to be cruising when Braga had a man sent off. Rangers were 2 0 up. They looked to be confused, but seven minutes from the end, they conceded the goal to make it 2 1 on the night and 3 0 on aggregate. Um, um, so basically, sorry, 2 0 on aggregate, should I say. Um, so it went to extra time. Braga battled away for a while and then conceded the third goal from Rangers and saw another man sent off. Um, for basically stupidity, he got a yellow card for a foul, and then he just stood in the referee space and bellowed him, and he thought he'd had enough of him, and got a second yellow card in the space of about 30 seconds. So he was off, down to nine men. 
Rangers has wasted a few good... Scott Arfield was absolutely terrible when he came on. He wasted two really good chances. But eventually, they managed to seal the victory 3-1 and go through. So, in the semi-finals, um, West Ham will take on Eintracht Frankfurt. And um, Rangers will be taking on RB Leipzig. So, again, we're looking for an old British final there. So, we'll see what happens. And then to round off the European stuff, Leicester performed really well. Especially in the second half, I went to PSV, Eindhoven... They come from one down last night to win 2-1 and win 2-1 on aggregate after a little draw in the first game at the King Power. Um, you know, they battled really hard and um, maybe a surprising source. Ricardo Pereira was the scorer of the winning goal. Great finish um, after the first goal being scored by James Madison. He performed really well last night as well. Um, Rogers at half-time, Brendan Rogers went for it. Went for it with his attacking um, style and it paid off. He took the risk somewhere, but it worked. And they gradually ground... Um, PSV down to the point where they were all over them and they basically looked more like Leicester were going to score more and more goals. But they're through and in their semi-final they play Jose Mourinho's Roma so that'll be an interesting tie. Good, I'm sure he'll get a good welcome when he comes back to the UK will Jose. <clears throat> yep, so a very successful week um, for the British teams there in Europe. Um, moving away from that now back to the Premier League and last weekend saw a fantastic 2-2 draw between uh, Manchester City and Liverpool at Etihad. It was a very entertaining game. Could have gone either way. I think probably a draw was a fair result in the end. Um, that second 2-2 draw they've had this season. And they meet again this weekend in the FA Cup semi-final tomorrow, 3.30. Um, but it's, obviously the draw means there's nothing settled in terms of the title race. They're still going hammer and tongs at each other. Um, so plenty of uh, plenty of action still left there to come. Um, elsewhere, there were big wins for uh, Tottenham 1-4-0 at Villa, unfortunately. Um, Leeds had a big win in terms of uh, getting away from the bottom of the table. They had a 3 0 win at Watford, which probably condemns Watford maybe to relegation more or less now. Um, Norwich beat Burnley after Burnley's win over Everton. Norwich beat Burnley, so Burnley are back in the Maya, shall we say, somewhat. Chelsea had a 6 0 win at Southampton to probably secure third spot for them for this season. And we also had um, a vital win for Everton against Manchester United 1 0. Manchester United performed really poorly. Everton's goal was slightly fortuitous, I've got to say, and then just battled and kept United, who looked a little bit toothless, I've got to say. Um, so that's where we are in terms of um, the, the Premier League. We've got Tottenham's victory puts them in a good position to get that fourth spot now, really. Probably the favourites over Arsenal, I would say. West Ham aren't out of it yet. Manchester United look like they are out of it. Um, I think that's about it. Wolves probably haven't um, got anything to, left to give in terms of top four. They're probably going to finish seventh or eighth. This weekend, I've mentioned their FA Cup semi-finals. The first one is tomorrow, 3.30, uh, Manchester City against Liverpool. And then Sunday, 4.30, Chelsea against Crystal Palace. Hard to call the first one. Second one, you'd expect Chelsea to win, provided they perform anything like the normal levels. Uh, we have been doing the last two or three games. They've hit some good form, particular players like Mason Mount. Um, so they'll be looking to get through there. We have a couple of live TV games in the Premier League as well. Um... We've got the 12.30 Saturday game is on BT Sport is uh, Tottenham and Brighton. And then Sunday, 2.15 is Newcastle against Leicester. So they're two decent-ish games to watch as well. Um, you've also got four live championship games today on um, on Sky Sports, including a quarter past five, I think it is, Huddersfield at home to QPR. Huddersfield had a good win every night against Luton. And they, uh, they're up there, I think, in third place at the moment, looking like they're going to be in the playoffs. Um so that's where we are with those. Talking of playoffs, moving on to the National League. FC Halifax Town, a big game this afternoon. Way to Altrincham at Moss Lane. Hopefully they can get the three points there. It won't be easy. I'm sure Matty Coslow will have something to say about that. Um, he put the nail in the coffin of Chesterfield about a month ago when he played them at home. And as a former Halifax player, he'll probably want to put one over on his ex-teammates or ex-club anyway. Um, so a big game for Town there. And then on Monday, the big game against Chesterfield at the Shea, 20 past five, live on BT Sport. Um, could help towards settling the third, fourth and fifth spots to some, some degree. Obviously, Solihull are right in the mix as well. It's just Stockport look like they've gone and won the league. Uh, Wrexham are looking strong favourites now for second, so I think the best town can probably hope for is third. So a victory over Chesterfield would certainly help that and take... Um, Put the pressure back onto Solihull as well. Um, trying to, we're also battling in there. We've got Grimsby and Notts County now fighting away in sixth and seventh place as well. So, um, which all doesn't make any sense when the announcement seems to have been made that the um, playoff finals will be in June. Will be at the London Stadium in West Ham, 
when all the teams involved in the playoff race are from the north of the Midlands, it makes absolutely no sense to hold that final at West Ham Stadium. I'm not sure what goes on in the board level of the National League, but maybe it's because they didn't organise anything and thought, damn, what are we going to do now? Why are we going to put the game? And none of the venues they really wanted are available because we didn't organise it properly. But hey, that's not for us to worry about. We just need to try and get to the final, basically. That's the important bit for town. So good luck to the Shaman this weekend. And we'll be back next weekend to talk about how they've got on. Okay, um, now... Other things is want to wrap up on uh, rugby leagues next on the agenda and the Halifax Panthers have a big derby game tonight. Uh, Odds still, I think, seven thirty kick off away to Bradford Bulls. They'll be up for that. They have a good record recently against the Bulls. Hopefully, can put another one over on the Bulls as well. Uh, be good to see if you can. It's derby weekend really in rugby league this weekend. We had four games last night in the Super League, um, featuring a twenty all draw between Leeds and Huddersfield at Headingley. Um, a first French derby. Um, Super League game won by Catalans against Toulouse by 18 points to 10. We saw a big victory for Cattleford away to Wakefield by uh, 34 points to 4 as well. Um, today sees the two traditional Good Friday TV derby games that's been on the TV here has been the ones to show. The Hull derby, Hull and Hull KR 12.30 on Sky and then I think the other game is at 3pm and that's St Helens against Wigan. Um, St Helens, Wigan and, pa- and pa- Catalan are all on 12 points so far this season. Catalan having played one more game. So the victors between uh, St Helens and Wigan, unless it's a draw, which has got to be a possibility. Um, we'll see one of them go to the top of the table outright. And they all play again. They've all got another round of games on Monday. Um, the standout game from that for me is uh, Castleford against Leeds. And that's on TV, I believe, as well. So two rounds of games for the Super League, just a one round of games for the Championship teams. Um, this weekend. Um, in the world of stock cars, I've got two meetings, one tonight at Skegness and another one tomorrow evening at Oddsall Brad Stadium Bradford. Um, I've had a look at the line, I think it's 44 cars for Skegness and 39, 38 to 39 for, for, for Oddsall tomorrow. The Oddsall event features um, a pre-meeting, um, sort of like friendly event between father and sons, uh, you know, previous drivers. So we've got the Brig father and son, Neil and Sam Brig. We've got Graham and Jack France. We've got Frankie Wayman Sr., Frankie Wayman Jr. and Derek and Lee Fairhurst taking part in time trials against each other to try and see who's the best family. That's before the racing will start at 5.30. Like I say, I think it's 39 cars booked at the moment, including current world champion Tom Harris. Paul Harrison's putting in an appearance, I believe. John Lund, fought eight times former world champion. Frankie Wayman Jr., I've already mentioned him. Um, I'm guessing that Ryan Harrison may turn up. He hasn't booked in, but he's been doing where he's just been turning up and he's been on fire so far this season. So hopefully he'll be there as well. Um, so it should be a good action-packed meeting. Um, so enjoy that. And then in the world Speedway, Speedway season now underway. Good uh, return for Oxford, the first meeting. They won 49 points to 40, I think it was, against Scunthorpe at Sandy Lane on Wednesday night. Um, featuring a, a good performance by Troy Batchelor, who scored 15 um, in the uh, Premiership, well the Premiership hasn't started yet, we've got the League Cup, but Sheffield look like they've sealed, secured their place already in the semi-finals with three victories after th- out of three, after two narrow two-point victories away to both Bellevue and Wolverhampton, they had a comfortable 53-37 victory last night against Bellevue at Owlerton, um, Bellevue were, looked weak to be fair, they've got two riders, who, Jay Average and Jake Allen who didn't score any points at all, um, I'm guessing that they've it's not like going to manipulate averages, and I shouldn't say this, but they probably are. Get rid of one of those two and then bring somebody in for the league season. Um, that's the only problem with the average system in Speedway. You can manipulate it to uh, when you've had a bad start to the season. We know we didn't get the riders they wanted to. We took a gamble on keeping Bewley, but we didn't. it didn't work out because the rules didn't change as expected or as Mark Lemon had expected. And unfortunately, uh, we're struggling a bit at the moment. But Sheffield have started really well. And... Um, yeah, on Monday, Bellevue have got a double header against Wolverhampton. It's probably still pertinent to Wolves at more on that. Onus is on them to win those matches. So Bellevue are basically going to be out. They've lost two matches already. They can't get through because Sheffield have won three out of four. Uh, three out of three. They could, they've already can't get enough points. So, um, should be a good day for this if the weather's nice on Monday. But yeah, that's where we are with those. Um, anything else I need to mention? Oh, one of a retirement. Um, former world number one in tennis. Uh, Kim Kleisters, she's announced her retirement at the age of 38 from the game of tennis, so good luck to uh, Kim in what she does in the future. Um, also, 
briefly horse racing this weekend itv racing today and tomorrow featuring i think it's the finals of winter series and i'm gonna have that today i know it's linkfield that's where the racing is from today mainly so today and tomorrow live racing on itv4 i think it is um and that just about covers it really we had the um, Derby trial, uh, sorry, the uh, Guineas trials meeting earlier in the week, the Craven meeting at Newmarket Tuesday and Wednesday, and that was on TV. But um, we're sort of like getting towards the end of the jump season now. We've still got, I think it's having a pun I think it's the Punchestown Festival at the end of April, and then we've got the um, we've got the Guineas, the 2000 1000 Guineas over the weekend of the 30th of April and the 1st of May before we get into the flat season, which is picking up now. I prefer jumps, but because it's more exciting. Um, a lot of people prefer flat because it's more glamorous and there's less dirt involved probably and it's all for the hoorah henrys but there you go that's just my opinion on horse racing generally okay well i think that's about it for this week so i hope you've all enjoyed watching it anybody who's got any comments they want to add in um with regards to the cricket or so talk about joe root who they think might be a successor anybody wants to add anything or tell me anything about the halifax cricket league coming forward you know feel free to get in touch with me and i'll include it in any future podcasts so until next Friday, I wish you all a happy Easter and I'll see you again then. Bye for now.